Agora TV. The world is thinking. Why did mercantilism come back? Why did the oligopolies come back? It's not simply because we did away with so many regulations. It's because we misidentified uh, what was happening. Uh, we talk all the time for or against the marketplace and capitalism. Well, you know, capitalism is ownership, it's competition, it's technology, it's trade. But the other element in capitalism is scarcity. Right from the beginning, what makes capitalism work is scarcity. If you have not enough goods, then you can have a fight between different producers over who's got the best goods. And then you have a secondary fight over the prices. It's a secondary fight, the pricing, not a primary fight. And one of the great success stories of the capitalist social democratic revolution of the last 200 years is that the Western style developed economies are now in surplus. We've been in surplus for about 30, 40 years, probably since the 60s. We've been basically in surplus. You know, everything in this room, everything you're wearing, uh, there's, there's, there, this is being televised. Uh, everything in the houses of every person watching this, we have too much of. It doesn't mean it's probably properly distributed. It's not properly distributed, so you have poverty. But there, is, there are too many shoes. There are too many sweaters. There are too many cars. There are too many, and you just go down the list. Or there could be. So once you're in surplus, then suddenly, the, the prices don't work, the job market doesn't work, the growth doesn't work, because you don't need growth because you're in surplus. The whole model suddenly doesn't really function. And once you know you're in surplus, then you have to do something else. What we tried to do was to reach out and say, well, let's bring China and India in, because of course those are enormous markets. The only missing point was that China and India, and anybody knew that who wanted to, weren't in the business of buying, they were in the business of selling. So it wasn't going to help us. It was never going to help us. It is not going to help us. We are in surplus, and there are not the markets that we need um, for our goods. So the effect of being in surplus is that prices are pushed down. Uh, this pushes down wages. Suddenly, in order to uh, uh, have the goods, you have to go and get the goods from people who can produce them at lower wages. That doesn't deal with the problem of who, how you're going to get the income to buy the goods. And in any case, you don't need the goods because we're in a surplus situation. So, and if you listen to what the Chinese were saying, you'd know. I mean, and many people in this country, this is one of the best countries for that, of people knowing about China. If you listen to what they're saying, the Chinese never believed it was going to work. They, nobody in China ever uses the word globalization. Whenever you bring it up in China, they say, oh, yeah, that's, a, that's an American idea. Well, it's actually an English idea, but I mean, they never thought of it as something that applied to them. They thought of it as a neat opportunity to sell goods to us. I don't blame them. I'm not even criticizing them. I think I'm criticizing us for being so naive. Meanwhile, in order to try and deal with their internal problems, they brought in things like, in 2005, something called the five equilibriums, or the 25 benchmarks for the civil service. Or in 2007, Premier Wen said, the speed of a fleet is not determined by the ship which travels the fastest, but the one that travels the slowest. That's kind of interesting. That suggests he doesn't believe in globalization. He doesn't. We just haven't recognized that they're playing a completely separate game, which may be actually an extremely interesting or intelligent game. And instead of that, we've continued on in this, what I would call, consumption fantasy, that we actually need to produce more to consume more, even though we're in surplus.